Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. We thank God tonight for the testimony of victory. We thank God tonight for the opportunity to be seen and not viewed. And we thank God for the chance to be in the number just one more time. Is anybody here tonight other than me? That if you took the time to think back over your life, you wouldn't have been caught dead in the church on a Friday night. In fact, the only way we could have gotten you in church on a Friday night is if you were dead. Amen. But God has been so good to you and has been your people. You can now say even on a Friday, I was glad for the Sunday. Go into the house of the Lord. We certainly do honor the pastor of this great church, Pastor Reginald Thomas. Y'all praise God for him. He is a wonderful gentleman, wonderful preacher, wonderful pastor. Greater Harvest, you have been obedient to the Lord, and the Lord is going to bless you. I know that the past 10 months or so have been a wonderful honeymoon. And I declare that if you keep on loving one another, keep on loving God, the honeymoon will never end. Amen. So we thank God. We certainly do thank God for the first lady of this church, Lady Thomas. I bless you. Y'all praise God for the first lady. Indeed, uh, it is often that we make the mistake of saying behind every great man is a great woman. That is a huge mistake. Because if the man is truly great, then he has a great woman beside him. So we thank God for what the Lord is doing in your life. To the family here at Greater Harvest, it is good to be with you uh, once again. I, I will let you know that I have been a part of... of uh, all of the major steps in ministry of your pastor. I was there when he was ordained. I was there when he was licensed. I was here uh, when he was installed. I'll be there when he has his uh, first anniversary celebration. I'll be there when he has his fifth, his tenth, fifteenth. However many years I will be there with him because he has proven himself a friend. And he has proven himself a great man of God. Yes. So good to see the Greens tonight. Amen. Amen. I, I was about to say I've known them for a long time. They have known me longer than, than I've known them. Uh, they were good friends of my mother. And the relationship still uh, carries to this day. And I just thank God whenever I see them. Um, it is, it is, I know I've got at least two amens in the house whenever I see my brother and sister Green to the Mount Calvary family uh, that is here tonight. We indeed thank God uh, for you. Uh, Mount Calvary is split tonight in three different places. Um, our young people are at um, Funplex, um, riding go-karts and playing video games and all that other stuff, we thought that they ought to have a treat tonight, so they are there. Um, the majority of our ministerial staff is uh, at a conference tonight, and uh, those who are at neither of those two places, uh, maybe they had a flashback and said they wouldn't be caught dead in the church on a Friday night. But indeed, we thank God for those who are here, and we thank God for the opportunity to praise Him once again. Now it is. Um, I forgot my glasses, um, and, and just as I, I left the house, my wife said to me, do you have your handkerchief? I said, yes. She said, uh, do you have your, your, your tablet? I said, yes, and it started. she started getting on my nerves, let me tell you. you know, sometimes I can say that because she's not here. You know, sometimes when your wife keeps asking you, 
and then she said, do you have your glasses? And I just said, yeah, I got them, because I was, and I don't have my glasses. <laughs> and don't worry, it's not, it's not so bad. What that means is I can't see the clock on my wrist, I can't see the clock on my tablet, and I can't see the clock at the back of the church. <laughs> Which means I have no way of keeping time. <laughs> So I'm going to preach until I get at least 3,000 amens. And you can, you can make that last all night, or you can figure out a way to get in 3,000 amens in 15 minutes. But as soon as we get to 3,000, I'm going to stop. And I can stay here all night. But y'all help me get to that number 3,000. I pray that we can get there before midnight. practice. So I'll, I'll let you know when the, when the amen meter starts. There is a word from the Lord on tonight. We thank God for the great preachers that you've had uh, this week. Dear friend, uh, Dr. Jerry Sanders with you on Wednesday. Uh, dear friend and, and indeed um, son of our church and that is grandmother and mother uh, members of Mount Calvary, uh, Pastor uh, Niles Wilson, uh, so I know that you've had some great preaching this week. It was Niles, wasn't it? Glenn Wilson. Oh, okay. He's, he's my friend as well. Uh, Pastor Glenn Wilson. Uh, so I know you had some great preaching this week. Uh, so I don't have to do a whole lot tonight because you've already had your fill. So if you have your Bibles with me, if you would go with me to the book of Genesis. Going to go to the Old Testament to look for a New Testament message. <laughs> book of Genesis chapter number 22. We're going to begin at verse number 1 and read down uh, through verse number 14. Once you're found it won't you rest on your feet as is the custom of this house and as we pay honor to the word of God. Again in Genesis chapter 22. Beginning at verse number one, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And there we read, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose, and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. And I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire. And the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. 
So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. May the Lord bless the readers and hearers of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we can thank you for just another opportunity to stand in this place to worship your holy name for indeed God you are worthy of all the praise and all the honor we pray now God that something would be said or done in this place that would draw someone closer to Jesus we ask God that you would lighten every burden we ask God that you would give the increase as only you can we ask God that you would bless these your people whatever it is they stand in need of We've already heard it in your word that you shall provide. And now, God, it is my prayer that you would hide me behind the cross. Allow me to decrease that the presence of the Holy Spirit might increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Indeed, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, let the people of God say amen. amen. So Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. I'm going to talk tonight from the subject, I'm going back better. I'm going back better. Life sometimes can be confusing, trying, and even difficult. Life, if you are not careful, will even drive you to drink. Life can seem discouraging and can make you afraid to wake up in the morning. Sometimes problems that we find in this life come one after another. Bills overwhelming. Job laying off. Body racked with pain. It seems like if it's not one thing, it's another. I've stopped by 15th Avenue tonight simply to tell you that if you trust God, you can go home tonight better than you did when you left. I don't have any get-rich-quick schemes. I'm not going to tell you to jump up and name it and claim it. I'm not going to tell you to high-five your, your neighbor so that you can blab it and grab it. I'm simply here to tell you if you take home the right thing, you'll be better off tonight than you were when you came. I don't know about you, but I've come to understand some things about the Lord. Number one, I've come to realize that every problem that God places in front of us is simply designed to bring a praise out of us. Think about some of the things that you've encountered in your life that before you came up against that wall, you thought that wall would destroy you. But now, because you know how to pray, you know how to fall down on your knees, and before you say amen, I wish I had a real church tonight that could testify that God has torn down some walls that I never thought I could face. God has done great things. As we read in our text for tonight, we find a great father of the faith by the name of Abraham. Abraham in chapter 22 has already developed a relationship with God. For as Abraham just a few chapters ago, who received word from God that he would be blessed with a son. Uh, you all know the story that the angel came to Abraham, told Abraham that even in his old age that God would still bless him. Uh, while Abraham talked to the angel, his wife was outside listening and laughing. But I want you to know something, that sometimes when you talk to God, people are going to laugh at you. But just because they laugh doesn't mean that God won't provide. For it was that same God who promised that he would have a son 
And when God gave him a son, it says over in the previous chapter that even in her old age, Sarah bore him a son. And now Abraham has this son, the one and only son. You see, there's something special about having just one of anything. You see, if you have $10, it's not a problem to loan somebody five. But if you only have one dollar, it's difficult to give up that one dollar. I believe there are a couple of people here tonight that know how it is that you are eating your favorite meal. And it seems like nobody asks you for some until you get down to the last bite. It seems like if you were going to interrupt my meal, you would have asked for some when I started. Why do I have to get to the very end when I'm about to savor it the most and you ask for the last piece of what I have? I got out of the car today and a man asked me, said, brother, do you have some change? I said, man, if I had some change, I wouldn't be walking right now where I'm walking. It's something about having to give up your one and only anything. But now God says to Abraham, Abraham, you know that son that I promised you. You know that son that your wife laughed about. You know that son that neighbors said you would never have. You know that son that I blessed you with. That son, your one and only son, I need you to sacrifice him. Now wait a minute, God. It seems like if you wanted me to sacrifice one, you would have given me two, so I would at least have some extra. But sometimes, God will push you to your limit and ask for your very last to make sure that you understand that whatever the gift is that you have, it's not greater than the God who gave it to you. He tells Abraham to take your only son. God calls Abraham in verse number one. And Abraham responds, here I am. God says, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah. Now wait a minute, God, if you know I love him, why are you going to take him? If you know he means so much to me, why are you going to take him? God wants to know that no matter what you have, you never make it more important than God. Uh, how many of you know that, 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 that the first time you bought a brand new car, it was nice, it was shiny, it was brand new, now it's dented, it's raggedy, you don't know if it will start. Because God gave you one car, God will give you another. Never put stuff over God. He says, take your son, go to the land of Moriah, and when you get there, offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. Now, now there's something key about the burnt offering. Because the burnt offering was one that was given to the priest on the behalf of the atonement of sins. So in order for God to tell Abraham to take his only, what God is saying, Abraham, if you want to be in my grace, you've got to be willing to give me your best. We are here tonight in revival, not for show, not for fashion, but somebody believes that if I can just give God my best, doesn't matter how little it is, doesn't matter how low it is, doesn't matter what my neighbor thinks about it, if I can give God. God, my best, God's going to do something for me. How many of you know that if you don't hold back on God, God will never hold back on you. That if you open up your hands and bless the Lord, the Lord will bless you. He says, take your son Abraham. Yes, yes. Verse 3 says, early the next morning, Abraham got up. I've often wondered, preachers, what that night must have been like for Abraham. I've often wondered what that night must have been like to think about how it's going to be giving up my only son. But the text answers it right there because it says that Abraham rose early in the morning. Take a look at the nuances. See, in order for him to wake up, that means he went to sleep. Some of y'all are in here tonight. I see the bags on the eyes. You've been staying up all night wrestling with stuff that God has already taken care of. But all the worrying in the world is not going to change your situation. The old saints used to say, take your burdens to the Lord and just leave them there. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that can testify that when I leave my burdens with the Lord, I don't know how God does it. But every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Every time I take my burden, somehow God works my mess and turns it into a miracle. I don't know how God does it, but every time I trust Him, the Lord will take what I give Him. He'll breathe on it. He'll bless it. And when I wake up, it's a brand new day in the Lord. It's 
says that Abraham rose early in the morning. You see, when you worry, you can't sleep. When you're upset, you can't sleep. The Bible says the God of Israel never sleeps nor slumbers. If God's going to be up, why am I going to wake up with him? Say up with God. Give it to God and let God work it out. It says that early in the morning, Abraham got up. The second nuance there is that Abraham got up early in the morning, which means Abraham was excited. Well, wait a minute, preacher. How could he be excited about giving up his only son? I believe that Abraham understood something. Abraham said that and I believe that Abraham understood that yes the Lord will give and the Lord will take away but blessed be the name of the Lord Abraham must be thinking that if God is about to take this from me just imagine what God is about to give me those things that you've been holding on to that you've been afraid to lose let me tell you something God is waiting for you to open up your hand and let it go so that God can bless you with even more I can tell your testimony just by the way you look you You've lost some things, but you still have your joy. You've lost some friends, but you still have your praise. May not have the money that you want, but you still know that God will provide. May not live where you want, but you still know that your father has houses and mansions. Every time God takes, God will always give you more than he took away from you. Says that Abraham woke up early in the morning, took his son, and two of his servants. And he told his son Isaac, come on son, we're about to take a road trip. It says that Abraham cut down the wood for the burnt offering and went to the place which God had told him. Now, now, now watch this. Verse number four, it says that on the third day, after three days of walking, Abraham arrived at the place that God had appointed him. Uh, that number three has some significance Amen. because Abraham got there in three days it means that Abraham followed God's roadmap. You're talking now preacher uh, because if you fast forward a little bit to the book of Exodus you will find God sends a man by the name of Moses down to Egypt and God tells Pharaoh to let his people go and God has already fulfilled and made a promised land and that promised land is only a three day walking journey but somehow they end up lost in the wilderness for 40 days some of y'all have been wandering around in the wilderness trying to find your way and the destination that God has for you was only three days away but you had to do it your way you had to do it your way instead of doing in God's way, whenever you do it your way, you will always end up beating around the bush, lost and turned out. But when you let the Lord direct your steps, you will get to what God has in store for you. Says that Abraham, on the third day, says that he raised his eyes and saw the place that God had appointed him from afar. Then when Abraham saw where God had determined would be his destination. Abraham says the following. Abraham turns to the servants and tells the servants, y'all have to stay here. All right. That's right. Uh -huh. Point number two, put a pin in it. Uh -huh. The reason that some of us can't get what God has in store for us is because you're taking the wrong people with you to your destination. You got to learn how to cut some folk loose. You've got to learn how to let some folk go. Don't you know that the wrong people running with you will stunt your growth? Don't you know that hanging out with the wrong folk will keep you from getting to where God has in store for you? And if the truth be told, they don't want you to get to what God is trying to do for you anyway. So as long as you let them hang on to you and drag on to you, you better learn how to say, listen, I got some higher places to go. Y'all got to stay right here. How many of you can testify tonight that I got a couple of things that when I get home, I need to tell some folk, you have held me back long enough. God is taking me to the next level. And in order for me to get there, I got to cut you loose. And let me tell you something, you won't be hurting them because you might have been holding them back as well. That's why when God lifts you, you're going to have to go some places all by yourself. Stay with me. I, I can't see the clock. But Take your time. I, I only need about 2,000 more amens. Take your time. Since not only, watch this, not only 
Jesus. Did the slave, did the servants stay behind? Uh -huh. The donkey had to stay as well. Pastor Thomas, you're young and you're pastor. But you're going to have to cut some donkeys loose. Let me tell you something about donkeys. A donkey's a beast of burden. A donkey's not happy unless he's carrying some mess. Say it. Say it. Say it. A donkey's not satisfied unless he's loaded down. And then when the donkey gets loaded down, you still got to convince him to go where you want him to go. Let me tell you something. Donkeys will slow your roll. Donkeys will slow your process. And let me tell you something. Some of y'all have been riding on the wrong asses. That's why you can't get to what God has in store for you. You're going to have to cut some donkeys loose. You're going to have to tell the donkey, donkey, you stay here and you can hee-haw all you want to. But I'm going to go on in the name of the Lord. I understand, donkey, that you don't understand my anointing. Donkey, you don't understand my appointing. Donkey, you don't understand what God is doing. So, donkey, you stay right here. But I'm going to go on to see what God has in store for me. Is there anybody in the house tonight that's willing to tell a donkey or two, you got to stay here. You can make all the noise you want to, but I'm going to go on in the name of the Lord. You can hate on me all you want to, but I'm going to go on in the name of Jesus. He says, stay here with the donkey. The interesting thing about donkey, they don't want to go, but they also don't want to leave. That's right. They'd rather he and haul than to go on about their business. He says, stay here with the donkey. But me and the boy, we're going to go the conviction of Abraham. He says, I and the boy, we're going to go over there and worship and come again to you. Now, Abraham, in verse 1, got his orders. Abraham, take your son, your only son, the one you love, take him to Mount Moriah, and when you get there, I want you to offer him unto me as a burnt offering. And what God is saying to, to Abraham and, and, and the essence of a burnt offering is when burnt offerings went to the priest, number one, the priest would first sacrifice the animal, and that means simply kill him. After the animal was killed, it would then be consumed in the fire of the altar, which means there was nothing left of the animal that had been sacrificed and consumed on the fire Teach. other than ashes, Teach. which means the ashes are what's left when all of the life has been burned out of the situation so when we get to this verse and Abraham starts talking this crazy language saying that we are going to go over there and worship and we are going to be coming back what is it that Abraham knows that nobody else seems to know Abraham understands if I go over there with my boy I don't know how God is going to do it but when I come back I'm going to have more than I had when I went. He understood that if I'm obedient to the God, I don't know what God's going to do, but I do know that if I go in the name of the Lord, when I come back, God is going to exalt me for my faithfulness. He says, we are going to worship and we'll be back. Yes, Lord. Abraham took the wood and Burn offering. Uh -huh. Now, what's interesting here, uh -huh. and, and, and I, I told you we were going to get a New Testament message out of an old Testament thing. Yeah. Up to this point, Isaac has been carrying the wood. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Isaac is carrying, watch this, the very element uh -huh. that is about to kill him. Uh -huh. Come on, man. Yeah. Seems like I can yeah. see Jesus in this. Uh -huh. yeah. You see, you know they made Jesus carry his own cross. Yeah. 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 You know they made Jesus carry the very thing that they would use to kill him. Right. But I want you to know something, that the same thing that people will use to kill you, God will use it to exalt you. Yeah. 
the same traps that folk will set for you, God will not only deliver you from it, but God will make your enemies your footstool. It says that Abraham is carrying the very wood that's going to kill him. But when he gets there, watch what Abraham, watch what Abraham does. Abraham takes the wood from Isaac, and instead of just offering him, he builds an altar. In the midst of his sorrow, in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his situation, he builds an altar unto God. Somebody's going through a storm on this Friday revival night, and you're waiting to come out of your storm before you build your altar. And let me tell you something, you need to build your altar while you're in the storm. Because it doesn't, it doesn't take much to build an altar once you've been delivered. But, but to think about praising God in the midst of your struggle. To praise God when you're diagnosed with cancer, not when you're healed of the cancer. To praise God when you're diagnosed with HIV, not when you're healed of HIV. To praise God when you lose your job, not just when you have a job. To, to praise God when your friends not only love you, but when they forsake you. To praise God when your heart is broken is a great thing. He begins to build an altar. And that same altar is the altar that he's about to slay his son on. Mm. But Isaac, an observant son, mm. one who no doubt has been with his father through the process of sacrifice before. Amen. Isaac looks around and he takes inventory. Mm. He says, wood, mm. right. Right. check. Knife, check. Fire, check. Lamb. Let me paint it for you this way. Remember back when it was safe to send children to the corner store for you? Your mother would tell you, go to the store, get me a newspaper, carton of milk, uh -huh. some eggs. Uh -huh. She wouldn't write it down. She would shake you say, listen to me. <laughs> Newspaper, Come on, milk, and eggs. Right. And you would leave that house knowing that if I come home with the wrong stuff, <laughs> it ain't going to be pretty. <laughs> so you would walk reciting <laughs> newspaper <laughs> milk <laughs> and eggs you didn't stop to play because you had newspaper <laughs> milk <laughs> and eggs you couldn't run with your friends because you had newspaper <laughs> milk <laughs> and eggs you couldn't pet the dog because you had newspaper <laughs> milk <laughs> and eggs you get to the corner store the eggs could be in aisle one, the milk in aisle five, the paper in aisle six. You didn't get milk, paper, and eggs. Your assignment was to get paper, eggs, and milk. And you got it in that order. Because the order mattered. Because if you stepped out of order, it would throw your whole program off. <laughs> If you put one before the other, it might mess up your assignment. Isaac understands, I see the wood, I see the knife, I see the fire, but the list ain't complete. Hey, Daddy, where is the lamb? And look at what Abraham says. Abraham says, Isaac, God will provide a lamb, watch this, for himself. If God already has the right, lamb, right, right, right. how can you provide for yourself what you already have? You're missing. If God is already complete, you ought to stop acting like God can't make it if you don't show up. If God is already not God by himself, you ought to stop acting like the church can't make it without you. If God has all power in his hand, you ought to stop acting like you're the most powerful woman or man in the church. 
if, 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 if God is able to make all things and without him was nothing made that is made, you ought to stop acting like the world is going to stop if you ever decide to get off. But God is God all by himself. So the provision of the lamb was not for God, but it was for the faith of Abraham. The Bible says that he takes his son in the midst of that question. He takes Isaac and he begins to tie Isaac's hands up. What I like about it here is Isaac doesn't fight back. Isaac allows himself to be bound. Says that Abraham takes the fire and he sets the altar on fire. At this point it's clear to Isaac what's about to happen. But I want you to know something. I'd rather die for God Amen. than to live for the devil. Yeah. It says that as Isaac is laying there, just hear the wood crackling. Yeah. Feel the fire from the wood. It says that his father Abraham lifts his hand, preparing to strike down on his son. Yeah. But before he strikes his son, it says that a voice of an angel from heaven calls out Abraham. Yeah. Abraham in the Old Testament was a very popular name. But only one Abraham answered when the angel called. Uh -huh. Don't you know that when God calls you, doesn't matter who else is listening. Yeah. When God calls you, what God has for you yeah. is for you and for nobody else. Yeah. That's why I don't understand why people get nervous when God starts blessing somebody else I'm glad that God is blessing everybody I know I'm glad that God is healing folk on my pew I'm glad that God is delivering folk in my church I'm glad that God is keeping people in my family because I'm crazy enough to believe that what God has done for others uh, that he'll show up do the same for me the Bible says that the angel called on the name of Abraham, uh, uh -huh. said Abraham, Abraham, uh, and Abraham's answer was the same as it was in verse number one. Uh, Abraham said, here I am. Uh, you see, God needs some folk that are willing to answer, here I am. Uh, even when times get hard. God needs somebody to say, here I am. Even when your answer is not popular. God needs somebody to say, here I am. When arthritis is in your knees. God needs somebody to say, here I am. When friends forsake you. God needs somebody to say, here I am. When you're about to lose your mind. Is there anybody here that can can testify that when God called my name, I, I didn't know what to do, but I said, God, here I am. The angel said, after Abraham responded, said, Abraham, don't touch your son. Don't lay your hands on your son. Said Abraham, God knows that you fear him and God knows that you love him. Well, if you understand the Old Testament language, it's not that God had to do that to figure it out. God already knew how much Abraham loved him, but Abraham didn't know how much he loved God. Some of y'all in here tonight don't understand who you really are. You are a child of the only living king yes. you are a child of the king of kings yes. and the lord of lords and it says in my bible that your father your father is rich in houses and in land my bible says that your father has so many cattle that you can't count them one by one but you gotta count them by the hillside my bible says that your father has so much real estate uh, that in my father's house uh, there are many mansions uh, if it were not so I would have told you uh, my bible says that your father uh, not has some power uh, doesn't have most power uh, doesn't have a lot of power uh, but your father has all power uh, in his hands uh, and if your father has it uh, guess what that means uh, if my father has it uh, there's some things all I gotta do is call on my father 
Father's name, uh, is there anybody here uh, tonight uh, that in the midst of your struggle, you can call uh, on the name of Jesus. Uh, stop waiting uh, for Walgreen to heal you. Uh, Walgreen will make you sick. Uh, but if you call on uh, the name of Jesus, uh, he is a healer. Uh, Stop waiting huh, for Wells Fargo huh, to bail you out. Huh. Wells Fargo huh, ain't gonna give you a dime. Huh. But if you call on the name of Jesus, uh, you'll find uh, that he is a provider. Huh. Is there anybody huh, that can shout yeah? Huh, because the Lord has made huh, a way out of nowhere. Huh. The Bible says uh, that Abraham stopped her. Uh, in his tracks uh, and the angel said Abraham uh, look over there there's a ram uh, hung up in a bush uh, now wait a minute God uh, I believe uh, in my sanctified imagination that the ram uh, was there all along uh, but sometimes uh, when we're in stress uh, and sometimes uh, when we're in trouble uh, we can't see uh, what God's about to do but I stop by uh, tonight to tell you uh, that God is uh, about to do a brand new thing uh, in your life uh, uh, stop looking uh, at your problems uh, if Abraham uh, would have looked up uh, uh, higher than his problems uh, he would have seen uh, his solution uh, don't you know that that's why uh, David says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, for all my help comes from the Lord. That's why Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That's why your mama said, there's a bright side somewhere. That's why your father said, hold on a little longer and God's going to do what he said he would do. That's why this preacher stopped by the hood tonight to tell you that if you wait on God, that he shall renew your strength. The Bible says that there was a ram in the bush. I know that somebody tonight is on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Hold on. There is a ram in the bush. Somebody's contemplating suicide. There is a ram in the bush. Somebody's thinking about selling drugs. Don't do it. There's a ram in the bush. Somebody's about to go to the liquor cabinet. Don't do it. There's a ram in the bush. And I'll tell you what the ram really is. Rams are strong animals. Rams are rough animals. Rams are past animals. There's no way huh, that a bush uh, could hold a ram. Uh, but when God uh, ties up uh, yes. your enemy, uh, they can't uh, break loose. Uh, when God uh, ties up uh, your gift, uh, your gift uh, won't get away uh, from you. Uh, that's what I uh, love about the Lord. Uh, I hear Jesus say uh, to Pontius Pilate, uh, Pilot, you can't kill me. You don't have the right stuff. He says, Pilot, it's my life. And if I lay it down, I can pick it up when I want to. That ram in the bush is a glimpse, a prophetic glimpse of Jesus. That ram in the bush was there on purpose. That ram couldn't run, but he stayed there because the ram realized that if I die, Isaac lives. Watch this a long time ago in a place called Bethlehem. Born in a manger, they took my Jesus 
so lay him in the wooden manger. The wood of the manger is the cousin of the wood on Mariah. The wood at Mariah spoke down to 40 and three generations and said, get ready because there's someone coming by the name of Jesus that you're going to have to cradle and that wood in Bethlehem called the wood at Golgotha and said get ready because in 33 years you're going to be cut down just like your cousin back at Moriah in 33 years you're going to be cut down they're going to take one piece and lay it vertical take another piece and lay it horizontal but don't give up because you are about to, to carry the Lord of Lords. They took Mary's baby and whipped him all night long. But with every stripe, we are healed. Whip one heals arthritis. Whip two heals cancer. Whip three heals high blood pressure. Whip four heals blindness. Five uh, heals paralysis. Uh, with six uh, heals alcoholism. Uh, with seven uh, heals sin. Uh, with eight uh, heals depression. Uh, with nine uh, heals you. Uh, with ten uh, heals you. Uh, and if you live uh, like I used to live, uh, you need uh, the next 23 uh, just to heal you. Uh, they with ten uh, all night long. And he didn't say a mumbling word, but on Friday, they took the cousin of the wood at Bethlehem, of the wood at Moriah, and nailed Jesus in his right hand, nailed him in his left hand. Watch this, the thicket that the ram was caught in is a bush made of horns. The same bush made of thorns that held the ram. They now take Jesus, take the same thorns, make him a, a crown, saying, you are no king. I'm so glad that they put a crown on the Jesus. I'm so glad that they pierced his head. I'm so glad that on Friday he died.